for students entering here, can uh, can anyone hear my voice clearly and see the screen I share? Uh, it should be a PPT. Okay, okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay, maybe we can start. So, uh, welcome all of you to this tutorial six. And this, this tutorial six is about a brief review of topic three, uh, which is about the system of linear equation. And in the first 20 minutes, I will spend time to explain briefly uh, about what you have learned for topic three. And then I will give you some time to have some exercise to practice. And in the last 15 minutes, I will uh, walk through some problem with all of you. And all of you can find the tutorial notes on the Blackboard uh, course content tutorial, and you should find a PDF which has the tutorial notes and the exercises in the bottom part of that note. So if anyone uh, who already who are already confident enough, you can start doing the exercise. So um, let's start. So topic three uh, talks about system of linear equations. And for example, uh, system, what, are, what are system of linear equations? Uh, for example, there's three X plus Y equals to two, x plus three y equals to two. So in, in this example, we have variables, which are x and y that we want to solve. We want to know the answer. And we have two equations. And therefore, this is already a system of linear equations. But uh, in linear algebra, in linear algebra, we are not interested in this equation form. Rather, we are more interested in the vector form as the follow. So consider the left-hand side, the left-hand side part. We can write it as, we can write it as the following. A vector three, one multiplied by x plus a vector one, three multiplied by y equals to a new vector, a desired vector two, two. And the left-hand side can be further simplified as a matrix multiplication, three, one, one, three, multiplied by x, y, equals to a desired vector two, two. So in fact, if you see for any matrix, this is only one example, but you could see that for any matrix, if you can see this in this form, a matrix, multiplied by a vector equals to a desired vector B, where this X is a vector which contains all variable we want to solve. This is the most general representation. So it's a general representation of system of linear equations. So we are interested in solving for X. So we want to find X that satisfies this equation. Why do we want to make a equation a vector? It is because vector has a nice, a much nicer geometric properties, which I'm going to uh, teach you. And by understanding this, you could understand what's the meaning of the system of linear equations. So before I talk about the geometric meaning, uh, uh, let's do a brief review of the some basic uh, vector operation. So for example, in the left-hand side is the vector addition. So if I ask you to add these two vectors, three, one plus one, three equals to four, four. Uh, three, one plus one, three, many people could answer me equals to four, four. But what does it mean geometrically? So as you can see from the graph, this blue vector represents three, one, these are uh, red vectors represent one, three. And by adding these two vectors up, actually it means that uh, we draw a parallelogram of these two vectors, a parallelogram. And then uh, we connect the 
origin to the vertex of the parallelogram diagonally, then this vector, the green vector, is exactly equals to 4, 4. So this is the meaning of vector addition. So if you add these two vector ups, it will result in a new vector that has a different orientation than the original two vectors. And the right hand side is the vector multiplied by a scalar, uh, which is more simple. For example, you are given one vector, the blue vector is 2, 2. If you multiply it by a scalar, say 2, it will result in a red vector, 4, 4. It basically means that you try to lengthen the blue vectors twice to become 4, 4. So if the scalar is negative, then uh, the direction is become the opposite. It points to the opposite direction, but the same orientation. So you could know that after multiplying by a scalar, it always points to the same orientation, but uh, it could point to the opposite direction if you multiply it by a scalar. So um, turn back to why, what is a system of linear equations by graphically representation. So uh, we kept, actually we kept uh, the original system that I've mentioned, which is like this, 3, 1, 1, 3, uh, x, y equals to 2, 2. Oh, by the way, uh, anyone can see my writing, right? <laughs> uh, anyone can see my writing, right? So uh, in this uh, example, if you want to look at the graph, Actually, it means that you are given two vectors. You are given two vectors. Uh, three one represent by this blue vector. One three represent by this red vector. And what we want to do is that we want to change the length of these two given vectors. We want to change the length of these two given vectors by multiplying it by some scalar, x and y, such that after we change the length of it, if we add them together, it will become the desired vector, the answer vector 2, 2. So this is the essence of system of linear equations. For example, uh, in this system, in this particular example, uh, you could find x equals to 0 0.5, uh, y equals to 0 0.5 x equals to 0 0.5, y equals to 0 0.5. So it means that given this blue line, given this red line, what you have to do is you make these two lines length half. If you make them half, then you add them together, it will result to 2, 2, which is the desired vector. Mm -hmm. Note that this system uh, may not be 2, 2. For example, I want this to equals to somewhere, some vector here, some vector here. Here may be something like 4, 2. If I want this system to equals to 4, 2, then we basically did the same thing. <coughs> we may extend this, we are only given 3, 1 and 1, 3. Then we might extend this length by multiplying it by scalar x and also change the red vector like this. And we ex after changing the length of the blue vector and the red vector, if we add them up, it will result in a 4, 2, a new vector, a desired vector. So this is the meaning of a uh, system of linear equations. So you might ask, does that always has an answer? So in this system, x equals to 0 0.5, y equals to 0 0.5. Does that always has to be an answer? <coughs> and the answer to this problem is no. For example, uh, consider this system. And if I draw it by graph, then by the same meaning, because now we are only given one vector, which is 1, 1. So maybe I draw a vector 1, 1 here. This is the vector 1, 1. And we are only given this vector. And we want 
the answer, we want the desired vector to be one, two, which is like this. Then you can ask yourself, by changing the length of this given vector, can you reach the desired vector one, two? So you could immediately think the answer is no. No matter how you change the length of this vector, for example, you multiply it by half, say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or 2, 2, or any number, or even negative, negative 1, negative 1, you could see that it always points to the same orientation, like this. And therefore, these vectors can never reach 1, 2. And in this scenario, we can say this system is inconsistent. Inconsistent. And there is no solution. There is no solution of X which could satisfy this system of linear equations. And basically, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it means that there is no, there is no X which satisfies these two equations together. And it is quite intuitive for all of you, right? There's, you cannot find an x which is equals to one and equals to two together. And consider this system then. This system, now you are given two, two vectors. One, one, which is like this, one, one. And negative one, negative one, which is like this. And now the desired vectors is zero, which means the origin. So you, you can ask yourself the same question. Can you change the length of these two given vectors such that uh, when you add them up, it becomes a zero vector? And the answer is yes this time, because uh, it's very simple. As long as these two vectors <coughs> has the same length, then you will realize that this vector plus this vector is always equals to zero. For example, two, two plus negative two, negative two, or any number, a, a plus negative, negative a, it will always equals to zero. So in this example, you can find many combinations of x, say two, two, negative two, negative two, a, a, negative a, negative a. There is infinitely many combinations of a of x that satisfy these properties that makes the desired vector zero so in this example we say the system has infinitely uh, many solutions so let's do a, a very quick recap <coughs> In this system of equations, what we want to do is we are given two vectors. We are given, well, it may not be two, we are given a set of vectors. It may not be two, it may be three, maybe four, maybe many. We are given a set of vectors. What we want to do is we want to change the length of the given vectors such that after we're changing the length, if we add them together, it will become the desired vector. And this is the essence of linear equation. And there are, there may be three different scenarios, which is we might have a unique solution, which is in this case, x can only be 0 0.5, y can only be 0 0.5 in this system, in this particular system. And we can also have no solution. For example, in this particular system, no matter how we change the vector 1, 1, it cannot become 1, 2. And we can have a system that has infinitely many solutions, which means that we have a lot of x, as long as we add up these two vectors, uh, it becomes zero, then it is a solution. And there is infinitely many solutions. So in the next part, I will talk about then how do you know whether the system has either unique solution no solution or infinitely many solutions. 
uh, first, I would like to introduce the simple, or might not be simple, a rather simple method, which is called a determinant method. Determinant method, uh, keep this in mind, which only applies to square matrix, only applies to square matrix. So, because if if a matrix is not, is not a square, the determinant is not defined. <coughs> so what does it tell us? Because I uh, hope you still remember the definition of determinant and inverse. This A is called inverse, and inverse has the following properties. A multiplied by A inverse equals to A inverse multiplied by A equals to an identity matrix. And, and this is more important. A inverse is unique. It means there is no other A that satisfies this property. And so, uh, what if, if A inverse exists, if A inverse exists, then because the system of linear equation is AX equals to B, right? AX equals to B. If A inverse exists, then we can multiply both sides by A inverse. <coughs> and we know the left-hand side is equals to identity matrix. So we could know that the solution X is uniquely, de is uniquely determined by the equation A inverse multiplied by B. So in other words, in other words if A inverse exists, then the solution is unique because there's no other A inverse B. If A inverse exists, if inverse of A exists, then the solution is unique. But what is the conditions that make guarantee, guarantee the existence of the inverse of A? As you can see by the, uh, from maybe topic two, this is one equation that determine inverse of A, right? And you can see there's a denominator, which is determinant of A. <coughs> if determinant of A is zero, if determinant of A is zero, then you could know that this inverse of A is undefined. It means does not exist. So conversely, if determinant A is not zero, a inverse exists. And what, what do I just say? If A inverse exists, then the solution is unique. So basically it means if determinant of A is not zero, then the system has a unique solution. It has a unique solution. <coughs> So the determinant method basically say you just calculate the determinant and if it is not zero, then it has a unique solution. It is as simple as that. But what if it is zero? If determinant of A is zero, then you have to do extra tasks to determine whether, uh, uh, first of all, if determinant A is zero, then the solution is not unique <coughs> anymore. But it could still be there's no solution or there is infinitely many solutions, right? So you have to do an extra task to determine which is, what is the case. So the second method, which is more general, is called Gaussian elimination. And before I talk about it, um, let's do a very quick re review of row echelon form. <coughs> what is a row echelon form? A row echelon form means that <coughs> if a matrix A, if A is in row echelon form, row echelon form, I just say REF, <coughs> that it means that the first non zero entry of a row, or we call it pivot, the first non zero entry of a, the pivot of any row must be at the right hand side of the pivot of their previous row. So for example, for example, there's a matrix here. <coughs> and 
in the first row, the first non CO entry is here, is in the, is in the first column, say here. Then for the second row, because the pivot must be on the right hand side of the pivot of the previous row. So the first row, the pivot is here. It means that in the second row, the pivot should be on the right hand side of the first column, which should be here or should be even right. <coughs> it means that the first element should be zero. And, and so on and so forth. For example, now, now the second column, now the second row has a pivot in the second column. It means that in the third row, the first two elements must be zero. So that its first non zero entry is in the right hand side of the uh, pivot of the second row. And <clears throat> it does not matter, actually. For example, you are given a 100 times 100 matrix. Then, if in the 50th row, you find the first non zero entry is somewhere here. <coughs> somewhere here, which is the 55th column. Then in the 51st row, then the first non zero entry must be after 55th column, maybe in the 54, or maybe in the 55, 56, so and so forth. So the first 53 entry must be all zero, <coughs> which is the definition of a row echelon form. So what is Gaussian elimination? Uh, Gaussian elimination means that you have a system AX equals to B and we make a augmented matrix A hat equals to A and we supplement B in the right hand side of A. <coughs> then we convert it into a row echelon form. Why do we do so? For example, let's make the original example. 3, 1, 1, 3, x equals to 2, 2. This is corresponds to 3, x plus y equals to 2, x plus 3, y equals to 2. And we make an augmented matrix like this. 3, 1, 1, 3, 2, 2. And then, we make it a row echelon form. Uh, to make it simple, we can first swap the row, swapping the row, one, three, two, two. And then we use row two minus two, row one. Then we can obtain one, three, two, zero, negative, uh, three, sorry, three, row one. Negative eight, negative four. And after we reduce this to row echelon form, because we know that row operations would not affect the solution of the equations, as you could know, <coughs> we actually we basically simplify the system because this system, if we write write it back, write it write it back to a system of linear equations, actually it means x plus 3y equals to 2 and negative 8y equals to negative 4. And these two, these two systems are equivalent, which means the system, the, the answer, the solution is the same. But you can see uh, the second system is much more simple because you immediately tell the answer of y is 0.5. And x is 2 minus 3 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5, which is much more simple than the original system. <coughs> so, uh, so uh, what, what can we do about Gaussian elimination is, uh, let me erase this part. So, what can we say about, so why, why do I introduce Gaussian elimination? It's because uh, 
uh, go back to here. A hat is the augmented matrix, A, B. And then we try to reduce it to a row echelon form, right? And after reducing it to row echelon form, then we could know that we, we will observe something. We, we will observe some row of zero. So maybe something like this, one, two, something, zero, 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 something. We will observe some row of zero. And if you observe something like this, if you observe something like zero, 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 and then some number, some number k, which k does not equals to zero. What does that mean? It means that we want to find a solution. For example, here I have five zero. So let's say zero times x plus zero times y plus zero times z plus zero times a plus zero times b equals to a non-zero number k. Is it possible? Is it possible that you could find an x, y, zero, a, b such that the answer is k, which is a non-zero k? It's not possible, right? Unless they are all zero. So it means that whenever you observe something like zero, 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 and some non-zero number k in the right hand side, then you could immediately tell, you can immediately tell that the system has no solution. So what about uh, what about if you cannot observe something like this in A hat, in the row actual form of A hat? If you cannot observe something like this, then you have to further determine. How to further determine? Then you have to either introduce a concept called pivot. As I have introduced you, uh, as, as mentioned before, pivot is the first non-zero entry. For example, uh, in this augmented matrix, uh, just random draw some example. In this augmented matrix, the first non-zero entry is this in the first row and this in the second row, in the row echelon form, in the row echelon form. Then we say that the pivot is in the first column and in the second column. So, then we introduce two terms. For all variables that lies on the pivot column, let's say in this example, for variables for the lies on the first column and the second column. So it means the first and second variable. Uh, because, it is, uh, because it means one zero zero one x y equals to two two. The first and second variable are what we call basic variable. So it's a basic variable. So it means that uh, <coughs> they they are determined by the system. They're determined by the system. You cannot you need to solve x and y and find their exact value. So you cannot change their value. So in this case, because the pivot column the, is the first column and the second column. So it means that the first variable and the second variable is our basic variables. So in another case, for example, mm -hmm. one, zero, Zero, zero. Two, three, the same. In the second case, the augmented matrix is like this, but you could only find one pivot because it is the first pivot is the first non-zero entry. And the second row, there is no non-zero entry. They are all zero. So you can only find one pivot. If you only find one pivot, it means that only the first variable, because the pivot column is one, only the first variable is 
basic variable. It's basic. What about the second variable? All variables that are not, <coughs> all variables that are not in the pivot column, uh, we call it free variables. It means that they can be assigned to anything. So <coughs> back to the question, how do we know whether the system has unique solution or infinitely many solution? Is that if the system has no free variable, if the system has no free variable, then the solution is unique. The solution is unique. Basically, it's because all variables are determined by the system. Then you have no degree of freedom. The answer is fixed. There's only one answer. So if there's no free variable, it means the solution is unique. In other words, if there exist free variables, then because the free variables can be anything, so uh, it means it has an infinitely many solution. <coughs> So let's quickly uh, go through an example, which is on the tutorial notes. Uh, let me share. Tutorial notes. So in the page four of the tutorial notes, there is an example. And we can write the example like this. Uh, so it's W, so the example is W plus, there's two equations. <coughs> and there's two equations we can write as a system of a two by four matrix multiplied by x as four variables, w, x, y, and z, and z. And we want this to equals to a vector two, one. And then you, if you follow the example, you construct an augmented matrix, and you reduce it to a row echelon form. After you reduce it to a row echelon form, then as you can see, in the red, in the red color, is actually represents the pivot, the pivot, which means the first non-zero entry. <coughs> and then, because the pivot is in the first and the second column, which corresponds to the variable w and x, therefore, w and x are fixed at basic variables. They have to be determined by the system. In other words, because Y and Z is not on the pivot column, because there is no pivot in the third and fourth column. So Y and Z are free variables. They can be anything. So how do you deal with this system? Uh, basically, because it's already a row echelon form, you can take Y and Z as anything as you like. And you want to express, you try to express the basic variables X and W in terms of Y and Z. And if you follow the example, you could get the solution, which is in terms of Y and Z. So it means Y and Z can be anything. It means that the solution has infinitely many solutions. So in other words, if there's no free variables, then these two terms does not exist. Then it, the solution is unique. So this is the whole procedures of finding whether a system has whether no solution. No solution appears when when there's a case when you observe something like C O C O C O C O K, as I mentioned before. Then it must be no solution, or you can use determinant method. And then uh, if, there, if 
you if you cannot observe any CO, 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 K, then you count the number of pivots. If there's free variables, then there are infinitely many solutions. If there are no free variables, then uh, it has a unique solution. So this is basically uh, the review. And you guys can start, oh, maybe I overrun a little bit. So maybe you, I can give you guys some time to do the exercise part A and part B. Um, maybe give you around eight minutes, then I will spend a very little time, maybe four to five minutes to quickly go through some of the problem. <coughs> Um, feel free to ask questions. You can type or you can type on a group chat or you, you can use your mic. So by, by the, everyone can see my PowerPoint and my document clearly, right? So see the things I write on the screen or something. Oh, I, I realized I missed something. Uh, so because uh, we kept the general representation of system of linear equation is AX equals to B. And we say that the system is homogeneous when B equals to zero, a zero vector. Uh, it is not a scalar zero, it's a vector zero. It means all zero, a vector with all zero. <coughs> If B equals to zero, we say that the system is homogeneous. Homogeneous. And if the if B is not equals to zero, it means it's not zero vector. So maybe at least some at least something is not zero. So let's say like this. Then we say the system is heterogeneous. And if you consider all uh, all homogeneous all homogeneous system, we can write as ax equals to zero. Then uh, maybe people who are smart enough, you can immediately observe that x equals to uh, uh, let, let me talk about it and then I'll answer the question. So for the smart for this homogeneous system, if x equals to zero, it, it has to be a solution because a matrix multiplied by a zero vector is always equals to zero. 
So for all homogeneous system, X equals to zero is always a solution, but it is not the solution of interest, not our interest. Because uh, everyone can answer this. We don't have to do any computational work to say this is the answer. So X equals to zero is what we call it as a trivial solution, a trivial solution. But a trivial solution is still a solution. So you cannot disregard, you cannot say a trivial solution is not a solution. Uh, so whereas when you do exercise, you can see this term trivial solution. It means that x equals to zero. The solution that x equals to zero. Uh, let me look at the question. Wait. Uh, you you do you do not you do not have to make it to a reduced echelon form. Uh, you just have to make it an echelon form. Yes, because an echelon form is allows you to locate the pivots. A echelon form is enough for you to locate the pivots. And as I say, if there is if there is no free variables, then the solution is unique. And if there is three variables. It means if there's some variables that does not lie on pivot column, then the number of solution is infinite. So you don't have to make it a reduced echelon form. But a reduced echelon form is actually, uh, so it is my way because I think a reduced echelon form is more convenient if you want to solve the exact solution. <laughs> because you still have to do some extra computation to find out the answer if the solution is unique. And so do, do, I, do I answer your question? Uh, for those who don't want to say, because the, a student talked to me privately, so uh, so you may not you may not see the question. So a student asked me uh, when determining the number of solution, uh, is it is it a must to change the matrix to a reduced echelon form or just echelon form? Uh, so we don't have to we don't have to make it a reduced echelon form. Just an echelon form is enough because the purpose of making an echelon form is to locate the pivot. So after we locate all the pivots, then we have all the pivot columns. Then if if they if there is no free variables, it means that all columns are occupied by the pivots. Then the solution is unique. Otherwise, there is some variables that are not on the pivot columns. Then the number of solution is infinite. <coughs> so maybe there's a few minutes left. Let's go through some uh, answer of the exercise. Don't worry, I will post the solution after all the tutorial, so you can refer the answers afterwards. But I, I want to quickly go through some of it. <coughs> For example, consider the first the A, the part A, part A. Uh, let me show a whiteboard. <coughs> Oh, no, maybe not the right box, maybe here. Part A says that uh, we are given a system, AX equals to zero, and we have a matrix <coughs> like this. And A1 says that we want to find a system that only admits only the three field solution. And this is the tricky part actually, because as I mentioned before, trivial solution is, also, is still a solution. So it means that if I ask you, find the values of k such that it admits only trivial solution, it means that it only has one solution, which is all zero. If it only has one solution, then it means that the solution is unique. If the solution is unique, then 
you have to find the values of k such that the solution is unique. And in this exercise, it is more simple because it's a square matrix. So you could use the determinant method. <coughs> when will the determ when will the determinant method tells you that the solution is unique is when the inverse exists, right? Because if the inverse exists, X is uniquely determined by A inverse multiplied by B. So when is the inverse exists? The inverse exists if and only if determinant of A is not zero. So the first part, you can compute the determinant of A. It is a four by four determinant, four by four determinant, which is quite troublesome, but uh, you can do it, you can do it by a covetta expansion. <coughs> and after you calculate the determinant, you will find out a quadratic equation of k, which is k negative k plus one multiplied by two k minus one. And then you can know that uh, if k does not equals to negative one or half, then the determinant of a is not zero. And if it's not zero, then the solution is unique. If the solution is unique, because <coughs> the solution must be zero, so it means zero is a unique solution. So it means that the system admits only trivial solution. So the second part is basically the opposite of the first part. If the system is Actually, to be more careful, you only, all you have to do is you substitute k equals to negative 1 or 0 0.5. And you try to do the row echelon form to see whether it admits infinitely many solutions or no solutions. This is a more strict part. But actually, uh, to be more simple, <coughs> Because uh, for homogeneous system, AX equals to zero, it at, least, it at least has one solution, which is the trivial solution. So if the determinant of A is zero, it means that it must have infinitely many solutions because it is impossible for it's impossible that this system has no solution because you already know there exists at least one solution. You get what I mean? That you, you already know x equals to zero is a solution. So even if you calculate determinant of a and you find that equals to zero, then it is still not possible that x has no solution because you already know there is at least one solution. So you can conclude that if the determinant of A equals to zero, then it has infinite image solution, which is in the case when K equals to negative one or half. This is part A. And part B, basically, actually part B is quite similar. <coughs> when does it admit a unique solution? Uh, basically, I think everyone know you continue you continue to calculate the determinant of a. You will find out that oh, when k does not equals to negative one or half, then the solution must be unique because it is obtained by the determinant method. But when is the system has infinitely many solution and inconsistent? Then you can try. You need to try the value of k one by one. So because you have determined that <coughs> if k equals to negative one or k equals to half, the system is either has no solution or infinitely many solution. Then you have to try it one by one. You substitute k equals to negative one and do a echelon form reduction and try to observe. So in this, in the answer, you could see that after you reduce the echelon form, you can observe all row of zeros here. So you cannot observe something like zero, 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 K. 
So you cannot observe something like CO, 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 K. So at least it means that it has a solution. <coughs> but it has a solution, but does it have infinitely many solution or unique solution? Then you locate all the pivots. So in this case, you could see that, uh, oh yeah. let me share again. So if you substitute k equals to negative one, uh, you reduce it to a row echelon form. There's all row of zero, so it's no problem. The system has solution. And in this case, you locate all the pivot, which is in the first three columns, they have uh, non-zero entry in the first three columns, which means that the fourth column is three variables. So if the fourth column is three variables, it means that the system has infinitely many solutions. So uh, you can do the same by substitute k by half, and you can try to calculate whether it has a unique solution or infinitely many solution. And uh, so we are over on a little bit. So for those students uh, who have things to do, you can leave because I will post the solution afterwards, but I still want to talk about the last example. The last example is this. Wait, 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 wait. Let me write a platform. So the last example is like this. Uh, it's a graphical example. Uh, actually, the graphical one, I already tell you the answer uh, when I try to explain what does it mean. But I want to talk about this. Uh, show that one, zero, 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 one, zero, x equals to one, one, one has no solution. So what do I want to interpret is because in a previous example, uh, in the previous example, they are all two dimension. So does it apply to higher dimension? Because now there's the vector is one zero zero and zero one zero, right? You are given two vectors, one zero zero, zero one zero. And actually it's the same, right? It's actually the same thing. Just the dimension is higher. So you could draw this in the following. So this is the Z axis, which if your paper, you can imagine your paper as your X axis and Y axis. And the Z axis is above the paper or below the paper, underneath the paper. So X axis maybe is here, Y axis is here. So you can imagine this X and Y is the paper, the plane of your paper. So one zero zero means a vector like this, one zero zero, a vector like this. So here is one. Zero one zero means a vector like this. Right? So I want this system, I want some, I want to change the length of these two vectors such that it equals to one, one, one. Where is one, one, one? One, one, one is somewhere here. I, it's a, a bit hard to draw. Uh, it's somewhere here and projected here. It's somewhere here. Uh, maybe I draw it a bit ugly. Let me draw it. Let me draw it in a clear uh, manner. <laughs> I draw it a bit ugly. One zero 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 one zero. So B 
this is x axis. This is y axis. This is z axis. So the vector one zero. This is one zero zero. This is zero one zero. And the vector one 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 is somewhere here because here is here is one one zero. But right, here is one one zero. And you rise it by a level of one. Here's one. So the vector of one is actually like this. So here is one one one. So we call the definition of a linear system. You want to change the length of this vector and this vector, right? You want to change the vector of these two vectors such that uh, when you add them together, it equals to one, one, one. Is it possible? So I can draw a lot of examples. So you could, you could realize something that this is x axis, this is y axis. No matter how you change the length of this vector, it always, it always lies on the x, y plane. It always lies on the, your paper. It just literally means that if you draw two vectors on your paper, you add them up, it is still on your paper. So you cannot create a vector that if you draw two vectors on your paper, you cannot result a vector that is pointing towards you. So, in short, in conclusion, this system has no solution <coughs> because these two vectors, no matter how you change the length, how you multiply it, how you and then add them up. It always lies in the same plane. So it cannot reach to a vector that is pointing towards you or underneath you. And therefore, it has no solution. So this is the case of three dimension. What about four dimension, fifth dimension? Or there's many, 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 many different dimensions. Maybe there's 200, a vector of 200. Length. Although human cannot visualize, although human cannot visualize this, uh, you cannot draw it. But literally, geometrically, they mean the same. It means that uh, whether you change the length of the vector can make it result the desired vectors you want. So this is the meaning of a system of linear equation. So this is uh, uh, so this is the the end. I will post the solution. Sorry for the overrun. <laughs> so I overrun a bit more. So if anyone have any questions, feel free to answer ask me here or you can just email me uh, at any time. Uh, so I will I will record the tutorial and upload the tutorial to the blackboard. So you can reveal it uh, anytime as you like. Uh, okay, so this is the end. So, uh, good, good luck. Uh, hope, hope everyone understand and good luck. Bye 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 bye. I will post the solution afterwards.